Hello again. Welcome back to the Potting Shed. Today I want to do a houseplant Q&A. Now I've noticed in the comments in the last few weeks there's some, been some really interesting questions and I thought it would be fun rather than just replying to the comments like I usually do, I would reply to them on video so that you guys get to maybe answer some questions at the same time because I think there might be some common issues there and maybe something you haven't thought about as well. So let's give it a go and see. It's a new thing and I really like you to let me know what you think. And if you want me to do more of them, please do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and let me know down in the comments because these type of videos, not the best for the old YouTube algorithm. So you need to let me know if this is worth doing by hitting that thumbs up button, then I'll know it's worth doing some more of. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, so this is a comment on the spider plant repot video. It's from MIT guy and he says, nice video. Can the tuber for the other plant only be used for propagation? So in this video, I'm separating a uh, spider plant, one of which is still up there actually, uh, adorning the potting shed shelf. And it was getting a little bit unruly. And so the only course of action was to divide the plant. Now, there are tubers, if you've never noticed in a spider plant, if you have a look at the root, there are little tubers, almost like potato-like uh, tubers um, in the roots. Now, that is to hold nutrients and water, which is why they're so good if you forget about watering, because they can hold on to a little bit more water than general. They're pretty hardy spider plants and great plants for beginners or newbies. So I definitely would recommend a spider plant. Maybe not the most exciting, but they'll always keep going even if you forget the watering or even forget two weeks worth of watering. It'll soldier along until you remember. So they are good plants. So MIT guy was asking, can the tube be used for propagation? I'm, it's an interesting question, but I'm pretty sure no. Spider plants are propagated by division. They're clump forming. Uh, in natural habit. So the idea is that you want to separate the clumps and by doing that you'll have a bit of root with each clump and then it can grow on and more root growth is stimulated and that can then grow on to be a bigger plant. If you just take the tuber, I'm not sure, I've never tried it and I've not looked into it, but from the, my basic understanding of what its purpose is, is there to, to hold nutrients and to hold a degree of water for the plant in times of drought. I'd be surprised if it has everything it needs to produce roots and then sprout new growth. So I would say no, always stick to um, div division. So I would say no, always stick to division uh, with this particular plant. It's very easy to do. You saw that in the video that I made, you literally just separate them. I use my trusty harvest knife that I use for everything. Just get down there in the roots and chop it out. Um, don't be too worried about the roots as long as there's lots of roots there generally is with spider plants ease them apart make sure each clump has plenty of roots pot it up again into some decent soil and then in a few weeks it will gain its strength produce some new roots for itself and crack on again so that's the best method so there was another comment on the same spider plant video from Kim Lencher 7140 uh, saying my plant is growing up you can see the ball the root ball I guess on top but no roots coming out of the bottom uh, do I just add more soil to the top to top it off or do I uh, do I replant even though the roots are not coming out of the bottom of the pot so spider plants are really tolerant of crowded roots so you can let them be in a, um, a pot that is quite crowded with the roots until it's really climbing out of the pot. If you can start to see some of the roots at the top, yeah, if there's room, just add some more soil to the top. It doesn't really make too much difference. But if it's not coming out of the bottom, then it's probably not hugely crowded yet. Um, you can easily keep a spider plant in the same pot for two, three, four years without too much trouble. If you're noticing that it's drying out really, really quickly, as in 
within 24 or 48 hours it's wilting again and you're constantly putting water in and it's not enough, then I would say that's a good time to repot. But if it's not out the bottom, then that's a good sign that it's not so overcrowded yet. So um, yeah, I don't think it will be too much of a problem for you just yet. Okay, on to the next one. Ada F07 says, absolutely gorgeous. I think she's referring to the Anthurium, unfortunately. Never mind. Okay, this next comment is on the Bromley Ad Care video. It's from Ruth Neely3557. She says, what is the difference between a pup and a leaf? So bromeliads are epiphytes, which means they get a lot of their food and water from the atmosphere. They're less dependent on their roots. Generally in its life cycle, it will flower once it sends up big flower-like uh, bracts that are actually modified leaves. And within those are lots of tiny little flowers and they are quite stunning looking things but they generally flower once in its life cycle. And after that flowering, you will see what's called pups or offsets growing from the base of the adult plant. And those pups, if you let them grow on long enough, will become adult plants themselves and they in turn will flower once as well. Um, you can separate them. I've done a video on separating the offsets and letting them grow up. Um, in my experience, it's a very long-winded process and it's probably better either leaving it longer on the adult plant to get bigger because the adult plant has a lot more nutrients to give to the pup. So either leaving it longer for it to become more mature and then separating it or leaving it on the plant uh, and then having several other additional um, offsets around the plant, basically having a bigger plant and those in turn flowering it's quite an impressive sight i don't have one to show you to hand ruth but a leaf you will notice is coming out they're very much like a pineapple shape they're in the same family so you'll have these big arcing leaves coming out and a pup will be a clump of them and they're always growing from the base so they're quite obvious looking they look just look like a small or baby version of the adult plant and they're usually growing directly from the bottom of the adult plant i hope that makes sense Okay, this next comment comes from Carmen Sita 1654. Sorry if I butchered that one. Um, the comment is on the Croton Rescue video some time ago. Uh, that was a Croton Mrs. Eiston is their botanical name, I believe. So the comment is, I've subscribed just now. Thank you very much. May I know how and what you did to regain the leaves of the Croton? Uh, did you change the soil? Did you do anything different to make the plant happy? Uh, can you tell me or us? I certainly can. So it's a bit different because I didn't really change anything as such because it came to me. I have a friend who works for a well-known uh, plant company in the UK and um, for quite a while I was sent a lot of um, plants that were destined for the skip there because they're past their retail prime and so they were coming to me already sick with their leaves dropped and that's why I was making videos about the houseplant rescue uh, how to make them better so I didn't change anything specifically but uh, what you need to do if your plant isn't happy is to try and figure out what it might be wrong with it first so have a look at the soil is the soil particularly wet it, is it likely to have been overwatered? Is the soil particularly dry? Is it like to, likely to have been underwatered? Are the leaves wilting? Are the leaves yellowing? That indicates possibly overwatering. Are they brown and crispy and falling off? That indicates potentially underwatering. You need to have a best guess somewhere. Have a look under the leaves. Are there pests on the leaves? That might give you an idea that it's weakened due to the pests. So you've got to have somewhere to start. So Take your best guess and then change one thing and see how you get on. If, for example, you have yellowing leaves, the soil is quite wet, then you might think maybe I'll put too much water in this one and it's not like it. That's the best place to start. Stop watering uh, and have a look. If it's a, and put this down, if it's a pot within a pot, then take the inner pot out and have a look in the outer pot. Is there water sat in the outer pot? If so, drain it out and make sure the pot isn't sitting in water. Make sure the roots 
are not sitting in water. It's not a good idea to repot at this stage if the plant is weakened. That's just going to weaken it even more and will probably tip it over the edge. Don't feed it. Feeding a plant that is already in a stressed state will not do it any good. A lot of people thinking, think giving a plant food will help it when it's in a weakened state or a stressed state. It won't particularly. Let it recover first before you start with the feeding. So the right light, not too harsh light. You want bright light, but indirect. Don't get it in the direct sun just now. The croton uh, will uh, put up with, uh, codeine will put up with direct sun, but in its stress state, keep it in a bright indirect light to begin with, and then change one thing, like you said. Leave off the watering if you think it's overwatered. If it's dry and you think it might be underwater, give it a really good soak, put it in the sink, make sure the water is thoroughly through the pot and it's coming out of the holes at the bottom, then leave it, uh, leave it to drain through and make sure that there's even moisture all the way through the pot and then just give it time. The trouble is with houseplants is things happen very slowly. So sometimes once you realize there's a problem, it may already be too late, but all you can do is try, try something and then see, see if there's any difference. If it's perking up, then you're getting a clue that that might be the problem. And then if it's starting to grow new leaves, then you can put on, give it some uh, fertilizer and uh, coax it back into life. That can be pretty resilient croton. The one that I had came to me with only a two or three leaves, if I remember it as a while ago now, managed to get it up to a nice big bushy plant again. So they do come back if you can catch them in time. Hopefully that's been of help. So this next comment comes from Nom Nom Nommy and says, you sound like Bandit from Bluey. I don't know who Bandit or Bluey is, to be honest, but I'll take that as a compliment, I think. Okay, this next question comes from The Magic Called Life, and it's to do with the how to get your jasmine to flower video. It says, when you place your jasmine plant outside, do you keep it in a shaded part or full sun? Thanks for your advice. Uh, jasmine outside, shaded, part shade or full sun? Well, jasmine, uh, certainly in Europe, is pretty hardy. I've had them in different locations in the garden. I literally just boot it outside. <laughs> One of my videos does explain that I ignore my jasmine plant, which I'm currently <laughs> uh, in the process of ignore ignoring at the moment. It goes outside after it flowers. It spends the summer outside putting on new growth. Occasionally I'll walk past it and it's got loads of straggly growth and I cut it back. Each time you cut it back, it encourages new growth and each new growth has new opportunities for flowers next year. So it will stay out all summer and then crucially it stays out uh, into the autumn to get the lower colder temperatures. These co colder temperatures send signal to the plant to set the flowers for the next flowering season. So it does need to stay out to get the cold. You don't want hard frosts. If you leave it in the hard frost, it could, I say could, they are pretty hardy, but it could damage the plant. If it doesn't, it certainly can damage the flowering period for that year. So I'll keep it out into the autumn, but I'll keep an eye on the weather and see what it's doing. But it does like to get down below 10 degrees outside um, to, to get that indication that instruction within the cells of the plant now is the time to start start setting the flower buds and you'll see that happening uh, flower buds will start being produced and just as we get to the frost period so somewhere in october or november i will bring the plant into my rear porch which is unheated and it will stay there in an unheated but, but very bright position it gets the sun coming round the whole day to about three o'clock and so it will grow on, I'll keep watering it, and it will stay there in a cold, uh, but not frozen environment um, for November, December, January, round about of end, of end of January, beginning of February time, roughly, it will then start to flower. It can take a while once the flower buds form for it to flower. Once it starts to flower, if you like, you can bring it inside the house and enjoy it in your living area, in your dining room, in your lounge, in your bedroom, wherever you want, it will produce buckets and buckets of flowers and smell amazing. And the whole house will smell of jasmine. And it really is the highlight of my winter. It's one of the things I look forward to over the winter to enjoy the smell of jasmine throughout the house. And the flowers will be there for um, maybe a month, 
if you're lucky, depending on the temperature. I like to keep it in uh, a spare bedroom uh, of mine and I keep the heat right down on that bedroom deliberately because if you have it in a warm room, the flowers are gonna come quickly and they're gonna go over quickly. Have it in a slightly cooler environment, they'll, the flowers will come slowly, but last longer. I've just realized that hadn't answered the question whatsoever. I've just done an entire care guide on jasmine without answering the question. It doesn't matter where you keep it in the garden when you put it out. Put it in full sun, put it in part shade. The only place I wouldn't put it is in deep shade. Um, it will probably tolerate it. You just won't get as much growth. Uh, part shade where the sun comes around uh, is absolutely fine. Full sun, they're pretty hardy to full sun as well. Uh, if anything, I would put it in, in the more sunnier spot but if it is just make sure it's getting plenty of water if you're planting it in the ground it's not so much of a problem but if you still have it in a pot in a very sunny spot it's going to dry out quicker so you need to pay attention and give it plenty of water so just something to be mindful of but uh, that's a very long-winded answer to your question <laughs> Alrighty, I think that's enough questions for now. Please do let me know what you think of this type of uh, video. Please give it a thumbs up if you like it. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions you would like on a video like this. Let me know down in the comments below if you've got videos you want, uh, videos or uh, pictures you want to show to have help with. Hit me up on Instagram at Houseplant Hacks. You can send me a DM with your pictures and I will feature them on one of these videos. But like I said, do let me know. They, these videos are very difficult to get out um, with the old algorithm. So your thumbs up and your comments and your subscriptions help YouTube understand that this is a video worth watching. So please do let me know if you like it. If you would like to see anything else on this type of video, I'm always interested to hear your comments. All right, that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching. And I will catch you very soon on another video. Bye for now.